There are no words for me to express how I really feel about the season finale and the season as a whole. But if you also wonder why this review is long, you can pretty much guess. This is not going to be fun. This is Mega Man NG, and I welcome you all to my Flash Season 4 finale review. This review is a big one, because I'm not only reviewing the Season 4 finale, but I'm also re rating Season 4 as a whole, as well as some interesting topics that, well, it kind of caught my interest. But there's also talk about what to expect for Season 5. Will I review it? I don't know. But for now, let us talk about the episode, the Season 4 finale, We Are the Flash. Here's the deal. I'll provide a summary, as well as some of the main focus. Bear in mind that this review is a big one. And I also am going to say that, yes, all of my reviews, ever since I started with Season 2, are opinionated. Meaning that my opinion on this is my own. You are free to disagree with me, you are free to share your thoughts in the comments, and don't worry, I won't judge you if you liked it or hated it. Personally, a lot of people find it underwhelming, but me, I'll be providing my own thoughts on this. Let's get started. The Enlightenment has begun. DeVoe's plan to reshape the world and humanity is in full swing. To stop him, DeVoe's wife Marley suggests that they send Barry's subconscious into DeVoe's mind. In order to make it possible, Cecile is needed. Time is of the essence. DeVoe hopes that nothing can stop him, not even Team Flash. But Team Flash is determined to save their home, no matter the cost. Can they do it? Can they stop DeVoe? Can they save everyone before the world will be wiped of what makes them human? Yeah, not much of a summary is there. But I'm just going to say it right here. The season finale has come and gone. And it turned out to be meh. And that's from other people's opinions. But me personally, I'm expressing my own thoughts on this. So like I said, my opinion is my own. First off, the episode on its own merits. I'm going to say it right here. I did enjoy the season finale. I really did enjoy it because I really thought it would be the end. I mean, Team Flash was really out of options against someone who had like so many different powers that he became a very dangerous force to be reckoned with. I really do mean it. All throughout the entire season, DeVoe had been planning something big and needed all the powers from all the bus menace to do it. And it culminates into this, the Enlightenment. Pretty much using five satellites to pretty much cloud the entire world, strip it of all technology, thought, and human emotion just so DeVoe can rule it and guide humanity in a different direction. Now... Honestly, I kind of like this big plan. I just found it to be rather flawed. Don't get me wrong, I really did enjoy the episode, but here's the thing. There were a lot of negatives, and the negatives overweighed the power, I mean, the positives. I'm struggling to try to explain it, that it's already affecting my speech. But let's focus with the positives. First, how the plan came out. I mean, it was a rather interesting plan, mind you, but I expected a lot more. I really did expect a lot more from the season finale because I thought it would be a big showdown with the fate of the uh, fate of the world hanging in the balance, the enlightenment in full swing. And I mean, good God, I really wanted a showdown between Barry and DeVoe. It would have been interesting, but DeVoe's being like all God mode and such like that, and that would be an impossibility. However... Here's what I will say. It was alright for what it was worth. For starters, Barry reuniting with Ralph Dibney. And it turned out to be... It made me glee seeing Ralph Dibney again. Because after what happened to him earlier in the season... It made me really hurt. Because I grew to like Ralph Dibney as a character. I really mean it. And what made it better was Barry and Ralph Dibney working together to defeat the bow. In a rather hilarious and underwhelming way. But it does lead to Ralph Dibney regaining control of his body and sending DeVoe packing. This made me happy because now at least with Ralph Dibney returning and being a member of Team Flash again, I look forward to seeing more of his antics, for better or for worse. In my honest opinion, Ralph Dibney is my favorite character of the season, next to Clifford DeVoe, which I will be explaining on each of them soon enough. Not only that, but the Cisco harry subplot finally reaches its conclusion. 
And yeah, it does reach its conclusion with in the end, Harry regains his intelligence, but at the same time, he gained a better outlook. He actually found like what was more important to him. Sure, he may not be as smart as he used to be, but he found something important right in his heart. And I felt all the time that he bonded with Cisco. That to me felt was was just really satisfying. It made me also very heartwarming to say the least. It just it just hit me right in the feels, and it's a good kind. The subplot was resolved nicely, and yeah, this also will probably be the last time we'll see Harry again because, well, he's returning back to Earth 2, although his departure is rather a bit disappointing at best. Also, it's nice to see Wally West in the end. I still feel upset that Wally West ended up getting shafted because he kind of left the team during Season 4 and ended up on Legends, which I didn't mind it. I didn't mind having Wally West in Legends because it would give him something to do. But having him return for the season finale was kind of nice, even if it was for a short time. At least we get to see that Wally has learned a lot from his experience as a member of the Legends. That he didn't need to worry about being on Barry's shadow all the time. He can be himself. And I'm hoping that if he does make another appearance in Season 5, maybe he would be a bit more improved. Or rather, he can be a Flash of his own. Besides, in the comics, Wally West, the Wally West we know, would end up being the Flash after the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Nowadays, due to the events of DC Rebirth, we have two Wally Wests. The Wally we know, and the Wally we got in the New 52. And he goes on to be Kid Flash, so, works for me. But for all the positives, there are many negatives. And I have a lot, and I'm not afraid to let it all out. For starters, Defoe was defeated in the most underwhelming fashion possible. You have Defoe built up to be a serious threat right from the very beginning when he appeared on the wheel on his floating chair and going off from body to body, obtaining not only a new body to sustain himself, but their powers. It's just all the way up to now, leading up to the end and how he was defeated was a bit of a letdown, but at the same time, how he was defeated the first time was rather funny because when Ralph Dibney regained control of his body, he was able to expunge DeVoe out of it, which, given the circumstances, it was to be expected. But I still feel rather disappointed how he went down in such a manner. It was just the biggest letdown ever. And yeah, he was also defeated again when his subconscious was pretty much transferred into the chair and his wife decided to destroy it and it led to something even more underwhelming. Not to mention he went down in underwhelming fashion following the trope of what Andros would say, if I go down, I'm taking you with me, sending a satellite straight to Earth. I mean, I can know, I know underwhelming defeats when I see it. But this falls in the line of pettiness. I mean, DeVoe really, really didn't want it all to be a happy ending and stuff like that. I mean, come on. It just... I shudder at the thought of it, I swear. Not only that, but the Killer Floss subplot after Caitlyn lost her powers was left unresolved. I mean, I thought there would be at least some resolution that maybe Caitlyn would regain her Killer Frost persona. Because honestly, it wasn't going to be Caitlyn without it. It just, it just felt unresolved, and it left open. I don't even know if season 5 is going to end up focusing on that, or rather a part of it, but it felt so bad. It just felt so messed up. Not only that, the ending was also a bit unsatisfying as well. It all ends with a baby shower, I mean, like a, ba like a baby shower or something like that, and then it leads to that mysterious girl. All throughout the season, we met this girl many times, and she was speaking in a language similar to Barry's when he was in the Speed Force for six months. Now, we finally know her identity. Her identity is Nora Allen, the daughter of Barry and Iris from the future. And she says that, yeah, she needs help because she kind of made a big mistake. I don't know what it is, but if it means to set up season five, I'm more curious. It's just that... After the disappointment that is the season finale, what's the what what to expect for season five anyway? I mean, it just came out of nowhere, and it's bad enough that the season finale turned out to be a massive letdown. It's worse off when it sets up for this. I still feel that the writing is the biggest problem that I've had with this season, which brings up topic number two: rating season four as a whole. I'm just gonna say it right here and now. This is the weakest season bar none. 
I still feel that seasons 1 and 2 are still the best. Season 1 served to start things off, while season 2 continued it, and season 2 is without a doubt my favorite season hands down. For better or for worse, even if it led to the events of Flashpoint. It was just messy, messy, messy. I still find it to be weak because the writers were trying. They were trying to make it seem different now that Barry was in the Speed Force. But first episode, they brought him back. That's when I knew everything was going to go downhill. It's as if they jumped the shark just for that. And that is my problem. Because compared to season 3 with the whole Savitar thing, I found it looking back on it to be okay. Now, this is without a doubt the worst. Not even part 3 of the Crisis on Earth X crossover, which is considered the best of the Flash episodes, is enough to save it. There are a lot of issues that I have with it. They tried to replicate what made it work in season 1 and failed. They failed it miserably. And I just... Ugh. Yes, I know, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated with how this season ended because I thought it could be better. I had this hope in my mind that season 4 could end on a high note compared to last season. Turned out I was proven wrong and it just crashed and burned. I mean, I really wished. I really wished it could be better. Despite the fact that we had some instances where the episodes were good, the rest of the negatives outweigh the positives. Which is why season 4 is without a doubt the weakest season. I know, trying to find the right words to explain it is enough, but if you've been keeping up with my reviews, you can probably tell why it ended up being bad, if not worse, than the previous season. The only thing that I hope out of this is that Season 5 can fix the problems with Season 4, but if we were to compare it to other Arrowverse shows, or rather CWverse shows, Supergirl is near her end. Her, the end of the season for her is near. Legends had a pretty disappointing ending, but it, I mean, a disappointing end of the season. But in my opinion, the, the season finale for it was rather hilarious. Though the mid-season finale for it is still my favorite of the entire show, hands down. And Arrow? Arrow has actually been picking up in quality. It's actually getting better. Season 5 really made the show better. But Season 6, while not as good as 5, ended on a strong and satisfying note. And I hope that Season 7 can deliver. It's just that if we were to compare between seasons, Arrow would be on top. Then probably be, Le be Supergirl. Then Legends. And then The Flash. The Flash being without a doubt the weakest hands down. Like I said, I like the season finale, but the negatives outweigh the positives, and that to me is my biggest issue. Now then, before we move on to my rating for it, let's have a little bit of a talk. First up, on Ralph Dibney, a real hero. Yes, throughout the entire season, I felt that the season was also an arc for a guy named Ralph Dibney. When we first met him, Ralph Dibney was kind of a klutz, kind of a dummy, a jokester, stuff like that. But as time went on, we actually learned more about his backstory, about how, how he was a former cop for the CCPD, how he ended up losing his job and becoming a private investigator. And then he would eventually go on to be a hero. And he lasted a lot longer than most of the characters. I mean... I grew to like Ralph Dibney. I really enjoyed him big time and his actor should be praised for giving us a tremendous performance. For better or for worse. Even at the end when he would end up being possessed by the thinker. It made me feel bad for him. And I loved Ralph Dibney. It was a nice breath of fresh, I mean, a nice breath of fresh air to a show that I felt was going to go stale. And he offered something to the team more than anything else. A perfect balance because... Last season turned out to be pretty dark, and this season was trying to make it more lighthearted. Ralph Dibney was the perfect piece to that. It doesn't excuse the fact that the writing turned out to be a big issue. But regardless, I loved Ralph Dibney, and he was truly a great character to have. I grew to like him a lot, and seeing him as the elongated knight was just, just satisfying. And personally, after seeing him in the season finale back... I couldn't be more happier. So for me, Ralph Dibney was the true hero, not Barry. Because I felt that he ended up helping the team in their darkest times. Boosting their morale. And it made me feel more satisfying. But see, And when it was taken away, I felt that everyone took it the hardest. Especially Barry, who in a way inspired Ralph to be a hero. I still feel that Barry has issues with his characterization and all that. But Ralph Dibney more than makes up for it. And yeah, I just wished that most of the season would just be have Barry on the sidelines. So that way other characters can shine. 
Ralph Dibney was one example, and he turned out to be a good hero. He turned out to be very good. Not to mention, Iris being a speedster for one episode. She got a chance to shine, and it paid off. As for everyone else, well, not always. I felt that some characters ended up getting the shaft, like I already mentioned with Wally West and the like. Not to mention Cynthia, or rather, what was it, Breacher and her da- and his daughter? Yeah, their story was turned out to be okay, but the Cisco cynthia subplot ended up being a massive disappointment. At least with Ralph Dibney, it felt, it felt like it would come full circle. It did. It really did, and I liked it. I liked it, and personally, in my opinion, he was the one thing that helped make Season 4 better. Which is why he is the real hero, no matter how you look at it. Compared to previous seasons, he was something that I I enjoyed, big time. And, like I already said, it's just that everything about Ralph was awesome. Now, let's talk about the other side of the spectrum, Clifford DeVoe. Let's ask ourselves this big question. Is he the best Flash villain? The answer is yes. And no. And there's a good reason for that. In my honest opinion, I felt that Clifford DeVoe was a great Flash villain because he really knew how to hit Barry and Team Flash where it hurts. I mean, the old theory of the fastest man alive versus the fastest mind alive was interesting. I also liked his plan because it all had to do with Barry being out of the Speed Force and his actions would end up giving new problems. In this case, metahumans 12 metahumans and his plan was to obtain all of their powers and he was able to do so little by little little by little his plot began to set in motion and it was insane i really did like that i really like how every little time he would continue to being a bigger threat he would continue being a bigger threat episode in and episode out until finally he was able to obtain ralph's body and he would become the strongest threat that team flash would ever face He's also the most dangerous because with all those different powers at his disposal, it makes him deadly. It makes him outright terrifying. But I also feel that he was a bit flawed and predictable. Trust me, his defeat at the end of the season felt rather unsatisfactory. Because like I said, I expected better for this season. And truthfully, I don't mean disrespect to the actor who played Clifford, Neil Sandilands. He did a terrific job being a villain that actually proved out to be more dangerous than Eobard Thawne, Hunter Zolomon, or even Savitar. Yeah, DeVoe was actually a more dangerous villain because he decided to take it on a grand scale. Compared to the previous villains whose motivations were pretty much small or rather big in some cases... He took it one step further by wiping away anything and everything that represented the modern world and revert humanity to a more primitive state. And with him being the smartest mind in the universe, he would guide humanity and rule the world from it. If that's not big motivation, I don't know what is. I still feel that my biggest problem with the character is that he felt a bit too conceited. Not to mention he was just like a traditional villain in some ways, because he wants to like rule the world, yada, yada, yada. But I felt he had a motivation behind it because with seeing that his wife had left him and abandoned him and realizing that in the end, humanity is just as messed up as ever, he decided to wipe away everything. And we also get to see his backstory on how he became what he is, how he got his powers, how his powers affected him, and how his big plan connected to that. That to me is what I liked as a villain. And I really enjoyed Clifford DeVoe as being the best Flash villain. And he is hands down my favorite next to the others. I personally felt that if we end up getting a different villain next season, this will be pretty hard to top. I don't know for sure because remember this is my opinion, but I personally feel that DeVoe was a better villain all throughout. He still is. I could be wrong. You are more than welcome to judge me, but... Yeah, I stand by it. Clifford DeVoe is the best Flash villain for this season and the series. Hands down. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, last but not least is my final topic. What to expect for Season 5. I don't really know much else, but it's from what I've heard. From what I know from the ending of the Season 4 finale, we're about to be having Nora Allen, Barry and Iris' daughter, and the main focus involving something she messed up on which means that time travel will probably be a possibility. 
I have to wonder what storylines they're going to be adapting for it in this next season since, well, in the comics, Iris would end up being in the 30th century. And Barry would end up going there, falling in love with Iris, and marrying her there, and they would have a daughter, Nora Allen II. But it would also lead to Barry Allen's grandson, Bart Allen, a.k.a. Impulse, a.k.a. Kid Flash, a.k.a. The Flash. Yeah, that sort of thing. But I'm more curious. But what makes this more interesting is that Season 5, we're going to be ending up having another big crossover. A four-episode crossover that's going to be introducing another character to the Arrowverse. Yep. CW is probably going to be bringing in Catherine Kane, a.k.a. Batwoman. Gotham City is coming to the Arrowverse. And am I excited for it? Yes. Because we get to see a Batman for a change. Or in this case, a Batwoman. A lesbian Batwoman. Yes, Catherine Kane is a lesbian. Don't judge. I know it from what I see from the sources. I am really excited for what Season 5 will bring. The only thing that I hope is that it has to be better than last season. The writing needs to be improved. I feel that the characterization needs a bit more work. Because the Season 4 finale felt like a cheap understatement. Or rather, a disappointment. And most of all, please... Please don't make this any worse than it already is, because stuff like this is what's going to make me not want to review The Flash. And I review these episodes because to me it's fun and it's something I like doing. I only hope next season when it comes to the fall, it delivers. Because if not, then I may not have any reason to review this anymore. So yeah, now it's time for my rating for the season finale, as well as the overall season. What I'm going to say is this, there is no top five this time, because most of the episodes that I saw, aside from a few, turn out to be okay to outright mediocre. But if you want recommendations, I'll list three. Crisis on Earth X, The Elongated Night Rises, and I do believe Run Iris Run. Those are my recommendations, because those are all pretty good episodes, and plus it gives other characters a chance to shine. Not to mention the crossover, especially part 3, gives us Leo Snart. Not, and the fact that the gang had to have fun with this. So who am I to complain? My rating for We Are The Flash is a 6. I enjoyed the episode, but the problem is, is that the negatives outweigh the positives. And there are so many negatives, I could have rated this episode a lot lower. I could have rated this a 4. And for season 4 as a whole, I rated a 6. A 6 out of 10. It's an alright season with some ups, but a lot of downs. And I mean a lot. The only thing that I hope that next season, the writing needs to improve. Please don't make it be a repeat of a previous season. Have it stand out on its own. Make it better. I tell this to the writers because I want to keep watching this show. But I don't want the show to suffer. I really don't. I want it to be better. And the only way that can be done is if the writers can actually put an effort not even an episode written by Kevin Smith would be enough to save it. No way. But like I said, to each their own, I guess. So yes, that is going to be it for this season finale review. It's over 20 minutes long, but I'm going to be at work getting it ready and posting it for you guys. You won't be seeing any more Flash reviews until the fall, but I still haven't decided on whether I should review the Flash season 5. What do you guys think? Should I do it? Let me know in the comments what you think. And tell me what you think about the episode and the season in the comments as well. I look forward to hearing it from you guys. So that is pretty much going to be it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. It really does mean a lot to me. I look forward to hearing your feedback in the comments. Share this video around. Subscribe. And more importantly, click the bell. All it takes is just three clicks. And that's it. Subscribe. Click the bell. Save. Done. That is it. This is Mega Man NJ signing off. Peace out. I need a break.